All right, so you picked up hopefully a blue card that looks like this, that looks similar to what you've already had a couple of different times. So I've given you a few of these. Um, again, I split up um, two sections the first time, then I decided that was a bad idea, and I put them together and added the extra tangent stuff. But then, um, as I was looking at what we're gonna do with polar, which is what's coming next, there's an, actually another set of identities that we need to go through. Um, I was trying not to do all of them because there are so many, but so what I did on this card is, this is literally ever, all of them, but I put a, put a space here. So these down here are the ones that we are not gonna discuss, but I just went ahead and put them on there. Doesn't mean you can't use them, um, it's just not anything we're gonna go over. And what I added in additional is this right here, which is what we're doing today, the sum and the difference. And of course, you rarely get anything from me that's 100% right. So when I did adjust this, um, the fraction bars disappeared again. And I can't always see that because there's boxes around everything I have and I didn't catch that. So it's not a weird one, two thing. Like these actually are one halves. We're not gonna use these anyway, but if you wanna make those into one half, so it makes more sense, we're good. So I've, the very first one I gave you, I called it trig identities reference. Then the second one was trig identities re reference full. And then this one is trig identities reference full for real because, oh my God, okay, this really is all of them. I'm not taking anything off again because that was just dumb to do from the beginning. But have this handy and um, you can use that for everything else that you need. All right, so this is going on page 125, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. I always forget one side. Flip over here. And we're gonna look at the sum and difference identities. So the ones that are added in the, in the middle of that chart are also right here on your notes. And remember that these identities are just to help us kind of simplify things. It's how you get to manipulate the trig stuff. Um, this stuff has been proven, so basically you're getting to, to um, skip some steps here. But there's sum and difference because it's going to be sine, cosine, or tangent of a plus b or a minus b. Remember, you're not expected to memorize any of these necessarily, but you knew the quotients and the reciprocals before I ever even called them identities because that you just know what they are. I would imagine you would know at least one of the Pythagorean ones, if not all of them by now. Um, as far as the rest of them go, you should at least just be familiar enough with them to know that it might be something you can go find on that chart. Does that make sense to you? And so like if you, oh, I, that pattern looks familiar, let me go see if it matches, that kind of thing. So when you look up here at these, the tangent ones have the fraction in them, and they're all tangent once you substitute stuff in. The sine and cosine ones have sine and cosine inside of here mixed up, but the sine ones, both of them, have sine times cosine, and the cosine ones have cosine times cosine and sine times sine, so that's kind of how you can narrow down what you're looking up there to see. Okay, so we're gonna do a few different types of things with this. Let's look at number one. It says to condense it into a single trigonometric expression, then find the exact value. So look at tangent of five pi over 18. Do you know what that is? Yeah, me either, yeah, uh, me either, I don't know either. So, um, but if you look at that whole setup with the fraction and whatnot, does it match one of the identities up at the top? It does, right? And notice that when you have the A and B, like if this is A, this this value here has to match this one, this would be your B, right? So is this tangent of A plus B or tangent of A minus B? A minus B, right? So this is equal to the tangent of A would be five pi over 18 minus B, which is pi over 36. Now. In the original one, we don't get to combine these because they're not like terms, right? They have different values. Here, I can combine these because these are just two fractions which, which is inside the parentheses. Make sense? So we need a common denominator. What would our common denominator be? 36. So this is gonna be 10 pi over 36 minus pi over 36. So what's 10 pi minus pi? 9 pi, so 9 pi over 36. Can you reduce that? Yep, that becomes tangent of what? Yeah, tangent of pi fourths, right? And what's tangent of pi fourths? One. That's it. Yeah, see, you don't once you have those identities. Otherwise, it is kind of crazy. 
All right, so let's look at number two, the 13 pi over 10 and two pi over 15. You don't know those either. That's okay, because we've got a sine and cosine mixed, which means are you using sine or cosine? Sine, and is it of A plus B or A minus B? A minus B. So this is gonna give me the sine of 13 pi over 10 minus two pi over 15. So what's my common denominator here? 30. So this is 39 pi over 30 minus 4 pi over 30. Gives me the sine of 35 pi over 30. And when, what does that fraction reduce to? Okay, so 7 pi over 6. And then the sine of 7 pi sixths is negative one half, and you're done. Okay, any questions at all? All right, let's look at number three. Number three looks like it might be a tangent one again, right? And it we have the A and the B matches up good, so would this be tangent of A plus B or A minus B? A plus B. So this is the tangent of 48 degrees plus 102 degrees. So that gives me the tangent of 150 degrees. Now, my guess is most of you probably don't really know your values for your degrees, which is fine. Um, but remember when you thought degrees were so much easier than radians? Um, but And you're really pretty much, we're going to use radians for most everything. But degrees could pop up, so you got to be able to think through them. Think about your reference angle. If you're at 150, right? Then you're 30 before 180, right? So your reference angle is 30. 30 in radians is what? It's, well, the, the 30 is pi 6, but then in the second quadrant there, you would, it would be 5 pi 6. Make sense? Yeah. So that means that this is really the tangent of 5 pi 6. Whether you actually write that down or you just kind of think about it in your head so that you know it better, right? And then the tangent of 5 pi 6 would be what? Negative square root of 3 over 3. Okay. Easy enough? So you got to be able to think through the degrees, even if you just don't know them exactly. Like if I spit out a degree and you just tell me the radian, at least be able to think reference angle and figure it out. All right, let's go ahead and do um, four together quickly because it's easy too. So this has cosine and cosine together, which means it's a cosine, right? Is it of A plus B or A minus B? plus b. So this is the cosine of 300 plus 15 degrees. So that equals cosine of 315 degrees, right? What's 315 in radians? It's pi, yeah, pi force is my reference angle, so in the fourth quadrant it would be 7 pi force. Good. And so then the cosine is positive in the fourth quadrant, so what's my answer? Square root of 2 over 2. You're done. All right. Questions? All right. So that's kind of the evaluating part of it. Now we're going to look at simplifying it, which means we're not going to get just a number in the end most of the time. But we do need to simplify it down. So looking at number 5, same type of thing is that we've got cosine times cosine and sine times sine and the A's and the B's match up. Like if this was 2x and 4x and this was... 3x and 5x, then this wouldn't work, right? You have to have the A, B situation there. So this is a cosine. Is it cosine of A plus B or A minus B? A minus B. So this is the cosine of 2x minus 4x, which is the cosine of negative 2x, right? But we can't leave it as negative. So you look on your little thing. What's the cosine of negative theta? Cosine theta, yeah, and hopefully if it, you shouldn't have to really look at that all the time because if you understand what's happening with the unit circle, remember that you have whatever's in the, cosine's positive in the first and fourth quadrants. So the cosine of negative pi fourths is the same thing as pi fourths, right? But sine of negative pi fourths is negative sine of pi fourths. So for sine and tangent, that becomes a, that would be a negative, but for cosine um, and its reciprocal, it's positive. Okay, and if you're not sure, it's on your chart. All right, we good? Let's look at number six. 
That's a tangent, right? My A and B match up. Is it tangent of A plus B or A minus B? Plus B. So this is the tangent of 4 theta plus theta, which is the tangent of 5 theta. And that's it. And if you're going to have to use this in something, right, we're simplifying them because they'll show up in other things that you do. But isn't it going to be way easier to use tangent of 5 theta than this, no matter what you're doing? Like, it's just kind of a no-brainer there. That's a lot prettier. Okay. We good? All right, so let's look at number 7. This is sine and cosine mixed. So it's a sine. And is it sine of A plus B or A minus B? A minus B. So sine of pi halves minus alpha. And what's the sine of pi halves minus alpha? Cosine alpha. And you're done. So 8 looks like a tangent situation. Would it be A plus B or A minus B? Minus? Okay. So tangent of Y minus pi halves, right? Well, that was, even though sine of pi halves minus alpha was on your reference chart, this is not, right? Because the pi halves would have to be in front. So remember, we can take what's in here and factor out a negative 1 inside of there. So I get tangent of negative and then pi halves minus y. So now I have a tangent of negative theta situation that goes to negative tangent of theta. So negative tangent of pi halves minus y. And let me remind you that from here to here, this is factoring inside these parentheses, same old factoring you've been doing forever. From here to here is not factoring. I did not factor this negative out here. Does that make sense? Like, okay, but I can't leave it like this either. What's tangent of pi halves minus y? Cotangent. Okay, so since that's negative, it's going to be negative cotangent of y. And you're done. Everybody good? Yes? All right. Let's flip it over. All right, so tangent of x plus pi fourths equals tangent of x plus 1 over 1 minus tangent of x. We want to prove the identity, right? We're not solving for anything. We're just proving. So we are going to work with the left-hand side and make the right-hand side our goal there. So I take this, and I look at my little chart. Okay, because now we're kind of going in the other direction, and you find tangent of A plus B. So this is your A, this is your B, and you substitute it in. And you get tangent of X plus tangent of pi fourths over 1 minus tangent of X times tangent of pi fourths. And then you rewrite the right-hand side, tangent of X plus 1 over 1 minus tangent of x. Everybody with me so far? I just substituted it in right off my little identity. So on the left-hand side then, I'm going to rewrite my tangent of x. And then what is the tangent of pi fourths? 1. So this right here becomes 1 over 1 minus tangent of x. And tangent of pi fourths is 1, so I'm basically just multiplying that by 1, so it's just the tangent of x. Rewrite my right-hand side, tangent of x plus 1 over 1 minus tangent of x, and I'm done. That's it. Any questions at this point? All right. I'm going to change number, on number 10, we're going to change secant to sine and cosecant to cosine, because that was my intention when I put that one on there, and I didn't do it. So this one is actually right on the chart, right? So you can't be just like, oh, well, it's right here, see? Right. This is a proof, which means we're proving that this is true. And because you can prove it, that's why you get to skip all those steps inside of there. So instead of just working with the left-hand side and substituting this in, we're going to work with the right-hand side and use it as, as a difference as, to actually do the proof that this works. So on the left-hand side, I still have cosine of theta. 
On the right hand side, I have a sine of A minus B situation, so you find that. That's going to give you the sine of pi halves times the cosine of theta minus the cosine of pi halves times the sine of theta. Everybody with me so far? So left hand side, cosine of theta equals. What's the sine of pi halves? One. So I'm going to have one times the cosine of theta minus what's the cosine of pi halves? Zero times the sine of theta. So on the left hand side I have cosine theta equals, well one times cosine theta is just cosine theta minus zero times sine theta is just zero, so I'm not subtracting anything and I am done. So the reason this gets to be on the chart is because this little proof works and you don't have to go through those steps every time. Yeah, I didn't put one like that specifically so that you wouldn't be confused as to what to do, but yeah. All right, so let's look at 11. I got a lot of substituting to do, right? I got some indifference a few different times here, so it's going to be a big old fraction, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's difficult. Um, all right, so the sine of x plus y, so I find a plus sine of a plus b on here, right? And I'm going to substitute just in for that part right there. So sine of a plus b, that'll give me the sine of x times the cosine of y plus the sine of x. No, I'm sorry, dang it plus the cosine of x, sine of y. So that took care of this first little sum. Then minus, and I'm going to have to take care of this one, and so since I'm subtracting something with more than one term, I need parentheses, and this is going to be sine of a minus b, which will give me the sine of x, cosine of y, minus cosine of x, sine of y, all over. Then in the denominator, you got to take care of the cosine of x plus y. So that'll be cosine of x cosine y minus sine x sine y. So I'm going to do this one. I'm going to add this. So since I'm adding something with more than one terms, the parentheses don't matter here. And this is cosine of a minus b. So this becomes cosine x cosine y plus sine x sine y, and that's all supposed to equal the tangent of y. All right. There's no cutting corners here, right? You got to write it all out. Everybody good so far? So let's, I'll give you a chance to finish writing it down, someone else still writing. All right, in the numerator, let's condense some things here. I've got sine of x, cosine y here, and here. And what happens to them? They cancel out. They zero out, right? Because I'm going to get this minus this, right? So those are gone. Do the other ones cancel out? No, because this is this minus a negative. So this would give me two cosine x sine y's in the numerator. Everybody good so far? I have a cosine x cosine y right here and one right here. So that gives me two of those down there. Two cosine x cosine y. And then what happens with these? They zero out as well, right? Now, at the very beginning up here, don't try and start canceling things out in the fraction. Okay, that, re that quiz I gave you all back yesterday, there's so many of you that just made up math. Go back and look at that, and if you didn't make 100, see if you made something up somewhere, because that was very, very common. You're trying to cancel things that made absolutely no sense. So I have all this. That's equal to tangent of y. Now can I reduce some stuff? Yes, I can cancel these twos out because there's no addition or subtraction anywhere. Then I can cancel these cosines out. So this leaves me with the sine of y over cosine of y equals tangent y. So what's sine over cosine? Tangent. So tangent y equals tangent y. See how much fun that is? Oh, yes. Yeah, when it works out.
when you don't make stuff up in the middle, which is usually what's happening when things don't work out. Remind yourself of that. Any questions? All righty, last one. Um, so which side would you say looks more complicated? The right-hand side. So on the right-hand side, is there anything you feel like we haven't covered yet? Three theta, right? And if you look on your chart, there's nothing with a three theta there, okay? Because there's just not. But we gotta be able to figure out something to do so we can actually work with it. Just because we haven't done something specifically like that doesn't mean we can't do something. Um, so I'm gonna rewrite the left-hand side, cosecant theta minus four sine theta. And then in order to make cosine of three theta into something that I can actually work with, I'm gonna make this into cosine of 2 theta plus theta, all over sine theta times cosine theta. Okay. See what I did there? That's totally legal, because I'm just splitting up what's in there, because 2 theta plus theta is 3 theta, and I'm fine. I could have made that into 2 theta, I'm sorry, into um, 4 theta minus 1, but or minus theta, but I don't know what to do with 4 theta either. Do we know what to do with 2 theta? Look, we got something we can do, right? So now here, before I worry about my whole two theta thing, this is now cosine of a plus b. So I'm gonna rewrite the left-hand side. Cosecant theta minus four sine theta equals. So I have to take that cosine of a plus b and expand that numerator, right? So this is gonna become cosine of two theta times cosine of theta minus sine two theta sine theta all over sine theta cosine theta. Everybody with me? Okay, so let's just go ahead and rewrite the left-hand side. Cosecant theta minus four sine theta. All right, so I'm going to need to substitute something in for this cosine of two theta. And for that one, you have three options. You also, though, when you do this, it's going to be two terms no matter what, and you're going to have to multiply that cosine of theta in there. So I, there's two of those options where if I use them, when I distribute that in there, I'm going to end up with cosine cubed. You do it? Do you know, know what to do with cosine cubed? No. So I'm thinking we should try and avoid that one if we could. Does that make sense? So that's kind of how you narrow down your choices. I personally would use the second one because it will give me a sine squared, but I won't end up with anything cubed. And I think I like that better. So I'm going to put in this 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. And that's times cosine theta. Minus, and then sine of 2 theta is 2 sine theta cosine theta. And then I have this other sine theta that was being multiplied right there. And that's all over sine theta cosine theta. Everybody good so far? You understand where everything came from? Stop me if I lose you somewhere, or if you can't read my handwriting. All right, so now I'm just gonna clean up the numerator. I'm gonna rewrite the left-hand side. Cosecant theta minus four sine theta equals, then in the numerator, I'm gonna distribute that cosine theta, which is gonna give me cosine theta minus two sine squared theta cosine theta minus, and then I have two sines here, so this could be two sine squared theta cosine theta, all over sine theta cosine theta. Way back up here, could I have canceled these cosines right here? Gotten rid of them up there? No. Could I have canceled anything anywhere so far? No, okay, you're gonna be making stuff up, so be very, very careful with all that. So in the numerator, can I condense it any more? Yes, I have ne negative two, yeah, I'll give you negative four there, good. So I'm gonna rewrite this, so I've got cosecant theta minus four sine theta equals cosine theta minus four sine squared theta cosine theta all over sine theta, cosine theta. So can I cancel this sine with one of these? No. no. Can I cancel this cosine with this one? No. 
Right, okay. but yeah, but most of the time when people do that, they don't actually do what you're thinking. So is it, could you do it if you did it legally here? Yes, but I wouldn't suggest it for most of you because this is where most of you make up math. Um, but what can I do in the numerator? I can fat come in. Actually, I could do either one at this point. I would, um, I would factor out the GCF and then split the fraction, but you could split the fraction and then reduce it and the same thing happens. Like it doesn't matter. You just kind of have different things there. But in the numerator here, we have, um, or hey, let me write, cosecant theta minus four sine theta. And then this is equal to cosine theta times one minus four sine squared theta all over sine theta cosine theta. Now can I cancel something out? Yes, now it's legal. Whereas again, if I had split my fraction right here, um, it would have kind of all reduced at the same time and that's absolutely fine. Um, up here when I said, can I cancel these cosines? I can't just cancel these, that's a big fat no. But if you don't have addition or subtraction in the denominator and you wanna cancel something, as long as you cancel it in every single term, you're good. That's basically what factoring out the GCF does. So then I have cosecant theta minus four sine theta equals one minus four sine squared theta over sine theta. Can I cancel those signs there? No, but what can I do? Split it. So this is gonna give me cosecant theta minus four sine theta equals one over sine theta minus four sine squared theta over sine theta. Okay, so what is one over sine theta? Cosecant. And then I can cancel this sign out with one of them minus four sine theta. And if I had split the fraction way back up here, I would have saved myself a couple steps. That's just not how I saw it. And you can't, that's not always gonna work on every single one of these, so it just depends on what's happening. But are we good? A lot of writing, but once you actually get there and it all works out, it's very satisfying. You feel some success, right? Any questions at all? Okay, now. I know that we had um, Wi-Fi issues in here yesterday, but you did get started on the um, Desmos activity. It is due for everybody tomorrow by 7.45 in the morning. Doesn't matter if you were absent yesterday or not. You can do it from home. You can do it anywhere. You just have to have your notes and the computer. Um, and I'm making it due tomorrow before second period starts because I want to be able to talk about it tomorrow. But I'm not going to be I'm not going to be giving out the answers to people that didn't finish it. So um, it's shouldn't it's not terribly difficult. You just have to go through it and answer some questions. So make sure that that happens. That way I can kind of wrap it up tomorrow when we work on the review. Okay.